from an engineering standpoint, it's safe to say that every society that has ever existed has either been less powerful or failed miserably at channeling energy. Maybe it was inferior because its monetary systems were flawed and it couldn't channel capital, which is a key component of economic power. The society that deals in metal coins gets crushed by the society that deals in glass beads. And the society that deals in gold coins gets crushed by the society that deals in copper coins. And even then you think that gold is money? So the Spaniards expand their empire by conquering the new world and bringing back all the gold. However, this does not solve the problem because they double the supply of gold, leading to hyperinflation. As a result, both their economy and the Spanish empire collapsed due to their failure to comprehend the consequences of this monetary policy. Saylor has led MicroStrategy to prominence in the cryptocurrency market since August 2020, and the company has been rapidly amassing Bitcoin since then, strategically timed before Bitcoin's latest ascent. The corporation made news just recently with a big $155 million BTC acquisition. Influencers and industry insiders are becoming very excited about the fourth Bitcoin halving event, which is set to take place in April. Adam Back, inventor of Blockstream and world-renowned Cypherpink, has teased Bitcoin's mysterious creator, Satoshi Nakamoto, in the past, adding to the anticipation. On the first day of work, I used to read new hires passages from the story of civilization, and those words always seem to stick. My recent activities include reviewing and listening to the narrative of civilization, as well as listening to audio histories and audio versions of novels. This concludes the 12 volume, thousand page history of Western civilization written by Will and Ariel Durant. Finishing one of them takes around 50 hours. It encompasses our Eastern ancestry as well as the lives of ancient Greeks, Romans, Caesars, Christ, the Middle Ages, and the era of religion. The Age of Voltaire is playing in the background as I type this, and there are a few of reasons why I think it's a really positive thing to do. Let me start by saying that I listen to music whenever I'm running, walking, or driving. My time is better spent doing things I enjoy rather than listening to the same song over and over again, no matter how much I like it. However, the second point is that studying global history, be it the history of Western civilization or the economic conditions in the US prior to the Revolutionary War, in his books Conceived in Liberty or the History of Economic Thought from an Austrian perspective spanning thousands of years is illuminating. And listening to such things when you're an adult makes more sense than when you were a teenager or young adult. I didn't read it when I was younger, but now I do read some things. The second point though, is that the stories become much more comprehensible and coherent once some time has passed. The conflict between those who would impose their will and those who would spread freedom is a central theme and it has direct bearing on Bitcoin. Additionally, it aids in evading certain cliches and stereotypes. For instance, for countless generations, humans have been minting new forms of currency. A new king, a more moral society, and a new currency are the cornerstones of nearly all of these tales. They maintain its strength. They grow. In this money, everyone deals. They go on to further expansion. The next step is to go to war. Then they issue additional currency to fund the conflict. After that, they devalue the money. The value of the money will inevitably decline. Their debasement of the currency has made them untradeable. They blew it up and let it go. After a while, the troops began to notice that their pay was either completely useless or they didn't receive any at all. And when the troops aren't paid, there's mutiny or desertion. After that, it's always someone from beyond those borders who comes out on top. Naturally, that culture holds the barbarians responsible for their downfall. We were not to blame. The villains belong to a different religious or linguistic group. They assaulted us without reason. 
Every time our civilization falls, it is because of evildoers. However, the more accurate narrative is that society became obese, naive, and content. Eventually, they became haughty. The next step was for them to begin printing fake currency. The fact that you can't use counterfeit currency to pay your own troops was subsequently lost on them. It became clear that they couldn't sustain the conflicts they were engaged in, either because too many people were dying of starvation or because too many soldiers had deserted. After then, the war is lost. The following civilization then emerges. After then, it's business as usual. Yes, that does occur. By no means is it a dozen times. It's not an astronomical number. The number of times this has been read is in the thousands. The ascent, decline, fall, and subsequent resurgence are all on display. Common principles are always there. Furthermore, energy and power are vital to the ideas. Some cultures, like Japan simply do not wish to embrace firearms because they do not understand their use. A ban on firearms was recently enacted. Afterwards, armed Westerners arrived. China went through a similar phase where they wished to seal off their borders and just did not. Because of this, they were opposed to contemporary methods. The borders are opened when Westerners arrive armed with heavy weaponry. After that, the system of political authority breaks down. The deniers will eventually lose the next war when a better cannon is invented. Subsequently, an improved ship is developed by someone else. The deniers' naval might will subsequently decrease. Consequently, they perish from choking. Airplanes followed by tanks were invented by someone else. And so it continues Everything revolves around the concept of power and how to direct and control energy. People win wars because they have physical energy. After that, there's the economic energy. All the great civilizations have succeeded in establishing reliable monetary systems upon which to build their trading networks. After some time has passed, the grandson of the original setup person becomes slightly less expensive. Plus, the great grandkids end up being a little less expensive. They begin to quarrel with one another. After that, they devalue the money. Their commerce partners stop wanting to do business with them and their troops leave them. Also, they don't receive any of the commercial energy. Then they shift the responsibility to the barbarians and the cycle repeats. And with that, we conclude Will Durant. After reading it and considering it, you will come to the conclusion that nothing is new. Everything has been resolved. And most of history is narrated by a group of narcissistic, haughty men. This time, they believe everything will be different, and they were sent to Earth to make things right. In his late adolescence, Alexander the Great goes on a gallivanting expedition. We naturally refer to him as the Great. But the irony is that he died at the age of 33 after having, like, conquered 200 countries and practically lost his army. Then, within months of his death, everything falls apart. This keeps happening after a year, two years, or even 10 years of doing the same thing. Eventually, everything gives way. Thus, I find great pleasure in either reading or listening to such histories. They teach you a lot, in my opinion.